Merry Christmas to you all. According to Sir Yoga, Christ is settled on your Agya Chakra. His whole life is depicting the qualities of a person who is a realized soul <clears throat> and what he has suggested in his own life is that you should not have any greed or lust. The way these days people are greedy all over the world is really shocking. Right from the childhood our children also learn to ask for this or ask for that. Only complete satisfaction in life can give you that equanimity, that balance by which you do not hanker after things. These days even India has become very much westernized in the sense they are also very much wanting to have this and that. Actually, now in America suddenly with this happening, people are getting to spirituality. They come to spirituality because they think they have not found any satisfaction anywhere. But we have to see from His life, the great life of Christ. First He was born in a small little hut, as you so many of them when you come round, very much satisfied and He was put in a cradle which was all covered with dry, very dry grass. Can you imagine? And then He sacrificed His life on the cross. Whole thing is a story of a sacrifice because He had a power, power of Spirit that He could sacrifice anything. He even sacrificed His own life. So you can understand the greatness of Christ was coming from His great personality of spirituality. But the same Christ is worshipped all over the world, especially in the Western countries. And you'll be amazed to know how they're running after things. Or their industries are running with big stories about what they make and how people boast of their wealth, they will have a cross in their necks to show that they are Christians 
First of all, one should never bear that cross on which Christ was crucified. But they do make up by this hypocrisy and they are the another extreme of Christ. Not only they, but even their wives and their children are all very greedy people. They should have this, they should have that. But now India is very much in the same run. And what do they ask for? They think by getting all these things around them, they'll be very comfortable, it's not so. They are all the time hankering and they cannot even enjoy whatever they have achieved. It is something very surprising that in a country like America, where there was no corruption, but there were people who were making big, big, big money, they are supposed to be disciples of Christ. It's beyond me. India was once upon a time a real saintly country where saints were respected. But nowadays India has fallen down to such a low level of gre greed that impossible to understand these people. We can say they had not such a great following of Christ. And those who followed Christ, also the Christians here, they are the worst. They are the ones who have taken to all kinds of Western life of greed and they call themselves Christians. But Christ has shown that you don't need anything in this world. He is such a great personality, such a great incarnation, respected all everywhere by because His power of sacrificing was the highest, not because He was owning a big car or any big house, nothing, only because He was such a humble man. His life is remarkable. And that today He governs the hearts of so many, despite the fact He was born a very, very poor man and was crucified also as a very poor man. <clears throat> so those people who are running after money are no way Christians are nowhere near Christ. And so happy and joyous He was. And He helped the poor, He helped the needy, because He understood their problems, because He could feel them. He tried to help all kinds of diseased people, underprivileged, while today's world has come to such a nonsense that they help countries to fight. They create Christianity to fight. What is Christianity doing in this country? It's just to create a big 
power of creating lots of Christians. I've heard from many places how they are converting people to Christianity. Christ never converted even a single soul. He wanted to give transformation, as you all have got it, but not changing the religion or changing your birthmarks, no. And what did He achieve is this kind of a useless, third-rate people who are running after lust, and greed. I get worried sometimes about myself, that I hope my disciples and my children won't do things which are against Sahaj, which are against the principle of Sahaj. And one of the principles of Sahaj is that you have to help people, those who are downtrodden, those who are not yet realized, you have to give them realization. It is not the way the world is going on that we give help to people who are ruining this world. If we have to save this country, if we have to save the whole world, then we have to become like Christ. Develop your sacrificing temper. It should be a very, very powerful thing because you are all realized souls. Try to <coughs> develop that a temperament of helping others. I have known some very great people in my life who were always willing to give to people who haven't got it. And they have been of such a great temperament, they were never sort of given any big award or anything, but very happy if they could help others. It's very, very sad today in this country where so many people have sacrificed their lives to achieve independence and freedom. And what is happening is now, today, same people, or maybe their children, maybe not the same, are supposed to be governing, supposed to be in charge, are making money. Why this situation has come? In this country also we had many people who were extremely sacrificed. They were the leaders. But how many of you are like that? How many of you would like to give away something of yours to others? What would you do to help others? It's very sad that the Christian nations have never followed Christ and we also are becoming the same. I don't say that we should not do business or we should not make money. You can, but with all that you must remember, for whom are you doing it? What are you going to do with it? With this money, what are you going to do? 
actually we should find out at least in one year, have we given up one of our things to others? Not that I say you crucify yours, no, that's been too much. But can you at least sacrifice a little bit of your comfort for the people? Sir Yogis have to be extremely kind, extremely kind and loving people. If you are not that, you are not selfish. First thing, you should be kind and loving and understanding the problems around and try to help as many people as you can. But that is not so. Even Sir Yogis do not understand what is the value of their life. They are on the same path as Christ was, they are realized souls. They must have that feeling, they must have that oneness with the rest of the people and they should feel the sacrifice of Christ within themselves. How He sacrificed His life is to improve our agya, to remove our ego, to fight our ego, but we are so egoistical. Whatever He has done is a waste, is something people don't understand and they do not imbibe His character and His life. It's very bad. For us, He is a very great message for all the people who are realized souls. He is a very great example. There are so many things to be done. We have, as you know, my mind is always with the needy. And I have started many such organizations. You know them very well. Recently I started something for the destitute women and the orphans in Delhi. I paid most of the money. But at just the finishing, I said, why not ask the yogis? to pay that little money to finish and they did, they did pay. In Delhi I must congratulate them for showing the way to other surgeries. I was amazed how they could raise so much money for this big organization. It is something we never see how the women are suffering in our country, how the destitute women are suffering. They are left out by their husbands for no fault of theirs, no. Just like that, for some whim, they are left on the street with the children. More in the Muslims it's worse. And I felt very much that I should try to do something, at least bring the attention of the people to their lot and to their problem so that they come up into life and earn their living. I think it's the duty of all the surgeries to go and see around who need your help. Just don't live for yourself, earning for yourself, making money for yourself, but try to help. Help those people who can really be helped 
and they should say, it's the Sahaja Yogis who have done for us. So many ideas I have of helping people and I'm going to try them with whatever money I have. But I wish you could decide to do something for them. Especially this country is divided into at least two parts, one is the rich, another is the very poor people. These very poor people just make my heart wrench, wrench with pain. I don't know how to help them. It's such a vast community. But if you people decide, you can go around. Sit down. You can go around and you can find out ways and method of helping the pe people who are extremely poor. They need your help by all means and you are capable. With the Mahalakshmi's blessings, you are well equipped and try to help the poor, try to help the people who are in great trouble. I know they are not Sajogis, don't expect them to be Sajogis, they cannot be. At the time of Christ, how many there were who were Sajogis? How many people were there who could understand the depth of human problems? But Christ did and He sacrificed His life for the sins of the people. Can you imagine? It's a day to celebrate His birthday with very great joy. But what a birth, what a life that He had to go through. Nobody would like to have that kind of a life. But the essence of it we must understand. Running after greed is madness. There's no end to greed. Those who are greedy are greedy all the time. They are asking for money, asking for this, asking for that. Why not? See to others what do they want. Because we are in collective consciousness, we should understand what do these people want, what can we do for the people. I know it's very difficult in those modern times with all the advertisements going on, but we are Sajogis. We have to be normal people. We have to face it in a way that a saint has to face and try to eradicate all these ills by your special powers. Today is a day of great joy to me and to all of you. Also at the same time, when I see that the life of Christ, such a short life, how miserable it was. Not because of poverty, no, but because of hatred, and because of tortures he had to go through. He didn't mind poverty, didn't write anything about it. What he felt bad was really the way things are wrong and the way they were oppressed. And he took up all that agony, 
onto Himself to solve the problem. He created the Christians and what they are doing is nonsense, just a nonsense. It has no meaning. It is no meaning to Christ's life and it has no meaning to the richness of His great work. So when we are celebrating His birthday, we should also celebrate His sacrificing capacity, His power of loving. Now Sahaja Yogis have become very good people, very loving people, no doubt about it. But still I think the greed lingers on. There's no end to greed. I must tell you, I've seen people who are so mad. Like in America, they found out those people at the top of every organization, corporators, who were so rich, but they had twenty-five aeroplanes and about fifty over fifty cars. Are they going to travel by these fifty cars? How are they going to travel? One foot in one car and another foot in another car? But they had it, all this kind of madness. And they said that, now they have nothing to say as such, but now that's all confiscated. What will you do with all this kind of a temperament, people? Isn't it madness to have twenty-five aeroplanes and above fifty motor cars? And they thought no end of themselves, stupid as they were. When they will die, all this will finish. They are fighting about something in America, such a funny place. Where you do understand where are we going with our greed. This one incident where a very young girl married a very, very old man, very old. And when this old man died, he left all his money to this young lady. So the son came over and he made a case that I have been his son for so many years and how can this lady get all the money? She got billions and billions but still she wanted to have the whole. So she gave excuses saying, I've done so much for him with this old man, I've sacrificed so many things and this and that. It's a shameless thing, the way people are. And they are not ashamed that they are asking for money, 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 for comfort, comfort, comfort. It's very, very difficult to understand human beings. Once they have gone in a strange way, they can go to any extent. They don't know how to sacrifice. When I have seen, when Gandhiji asked people to sacrifice, all the women gave away their ornaments. They gave away their lives. They went to jail did all kinds of things to achieve independence. Now what is the independence they got? Immediately all the thugs of the world became in charge, all the thieves of the world became in charge. What do you say to such a country where everything that is great and noble goes into waste. Have you been a noble person? Ask us. Have you been noble? Have you tried to help others? 
from the life of Christ, we have to know that He lived in poverty. He was King of kings, but He lived in poverty with grace. And He did everything for people who were sinful, who were in trouble, such a lot, one person. Now you are so many, so many of you. You all have to do something. Don't live like these corporators, but try to know that you have to sacrifice something of your earnings, something of your luxuries for the sake of your country, because you are Sajavis, you are not ordinary people, you have got your Realization. So what are you doing? Are you demanding? money from everyone, or you are giving love to them. Let me hear the stories of Sajavis who are giving love and compassion. I'm sorry, today on the day of his birthday, I have to tell about your life, which was very, very painful otherwise. For us to understand that such a glorious personality, such a great Sir be, he had to go through so many problems in his life. And his own people troubled him. His own people tried to take advantage. I too have this experience from Sajogis who got well out of Sajoga and they tried to trouble me. They tried to make money out of me. Everyone knows they have such a bad value system that how can you say they are realized souls? So, we have to think where we can help others, what we can do for others. This is one of the things one has to learn from the life of Christ. I was actually born in a Christian family and what I found out among the Christians, that extremely they were mean, dirty people. They were planning against each other, and very money-oriented. When my father went to jail, they threw us out of church. To love your country is a sin, is it? They did it. And when he came back and he became the mayor of Bombay, uh, of Nagpur, they were his greatest admirers. They take out a procession, isn't it? So my father just smiled at it and he said, See this stupid people. This is complete stupidity. And this kind of greed and this kind of stupidity must be stopped. They run after money, they run after positions, they run after also very bad things, some of the things. Not the Sajogis, but they do. But even among Sajogis I have found people who are very money-oriented and they have made money out of Sajoga. I am such a useless person, I don't understand money, so they could be fool me. All right, doesn't matter. And for years together they were befooling me, it's all right. 
Now what to do? What do I need money for? That is the trouble. The trouble is if you are not careful, if you are not very money oriented, others can rob you. I say, let them rob. Let them do what they like. But I cannot develop a temperament by which I can get after people for money, I cannot. I accept whatever account you give me, I accept whatever you say. I know it is sinful, it is wrong. If they are not aware of it, I can't help it. They all will be ruined, all such people, I know that. But what to do if they don't realize it themselves? Making money out of Sahaja Yoga, can you imagine? Such a stupid thing to do, it's very common, very bad. I want you all to be above money, to above all these worldly things. And you will never starve, you will never have problem. But do not get mixed up with this kind of nonsensical things. This is God's work and you shouldn't make money out of it, in no way. So we have to learn a lot from the great life of Christ, who was born as a very humble man and he did such great things. He tried to improve our agyas and even now if you think of Him, your Agya will be all right, it will be finished. I know among Sahaja Yogis also there are people who are very pushing, who are all the time pushing themselves. For what? What do you want? All the time they are pushing around, just like all other stupid people. So to feel the satisfaction within yourself, just like Christ, you have to meditate and introspect and find out, are you satisfied people? You have to be very much satisfied in life, otherwise no use having Sahaja no use getting your self I bless you from my heart that you take the character of Christ as a model for you and to understand the problems of the world from the whole world as your own problems. May God bless you.